Hi everyone and welcome to the final week of our Advent Take 5 series. We hope you've been able to spend some time with us in the previous weeks looking at each one of the titles given to us in Isaiah 9 for the coming Messiah. This week we're going to be looking at the final one, the Prince of Peace. And as we think about and consider Jesus as the Prince of Peace, I think it could be good to take a moment of time for just self-reflection, to think about for ourselves maybe some of the circumstances or emotions that we may have experienced recently. Maybe we've had, we've had a loss in our family. Maybe we've experienced fear. We've been anxious. Had maybe some fits of anger. Maybe we've been lonely. Felt hopeless. Been stressed out. Isn't it interesting how in this Christmas season, which is really an immersion of that classic Hallmark trope of sunshine and rainbows and all of that, that we can experience so much negativity. And perhaps it's just part of our collective human experience, where we're always looking for peace, hope, love, fulfillment in really wherever we can find it. Maybe we'll have it for a moment, we'll find that peace, and then when we lose it, because it's not lasting, we find it in a different way. We seek fulfillment somewhere else. Yet as Christians, we know that as followers of Christ, we are not always going to be spared from negative experiences, yet something different has been promised to us. And we also know, and we want to remind ourselves as well, that our peace comes from somewhere else. It's not something that we can gain. Because of Jesus, it has been one for us. That peace has been promised to us. It's not in our circumstances that we find peace, yet at the same time, we shouldn't expect that anytime soon there will be an end of our struggles and disappointments in this life. On the contrary, Jesus seems to kind of suggest the opposite. On the night that he was betrayed, he was talking to his disciples, and in John 15, he says this, If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first, he said. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own, but as it is, you do not belong to the world but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teachings, they will obey yours also. Jesus is looking forward after his death and his resurrection. He knows what's coming. He knows what they're going to experience. He knows what they're going to accomplish, but he also understands the circumstances of the world that they're going to live in. The disciples, they accomplished so much. They established the early church. They answered the call on their lives and brought so many into relationship with Jesus. Yet at the same time, time and time again, it wasn't very often, if rarely, they ever experienced peaceful circumstances from that time onward. And so it's not just peaceful circumstances that we should strive for. But at the same time, Jesus, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, he does promise something. He promises the alternative as well. He says in uh, chapter 15, 14 of John, he says, All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus knows what's coming. He understands the world, the culture. He grew up in it. And so he understands. He probably understands it even better than we do. And so what he does is he promises peace in the face of their circumstances. So that same peace is offered and promised to us. As those who are followers of Christ and have the indwelling of the Spirit within us as well, we have that same peace that Jesus promised. So that means no matter what's going on around us, no matter our circumstances, we have that promise of peace from the Prince of Peace. And at the same time, we might not always feel it. So I want to spend some time in the next week and the upcoming days to unpack this idea of the peace that Jesus offers, because he offers peace in so many different ways. And as we unpack this Prince of Peace, as we learn about who he is, perhaps we can learn more about who we are in the process. 
Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope we have a good time on this journey this week together, and I'll see you then. Thanks.